Hello, my beautiful bookish people. In this video, I will be doing the 20 questions book tag because I was tagged by the booktube goddess. If you don't already know who the booktube goddess is, get your eyeballs over to the queen's channel because who doesn't need a goddess's book recommendations in their lives? Anyways, let's get into the questions, shall we? Question number one, how many books are too many for a series? I'm not sure that I'm the best person to answer this question because I'm currently reading through The Wheel of Time, which has 14 books, but also I've been trying to read through The Wheel of Time for I think this is my third year going <laughs> and I keep restarting the series because there are just so many books and I keep getting sidetracked by them like other series. So I'm going to say somewhere in between three to five books is a really nice place because you can binge read three books at a time without too much issue, I feel like. And then if there's five, it might wreck my sleep schedule really bad, but I would do it anyways. But past that, I probably wouldn't try to binge read, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Anyways, moving on to question number two. How do you feel about cliffhangers? If I'm actively reading a series as it's coming out, I hate them. I hate them with a fiery burning passion because I must know what comes next. But if I'm binge reading them, then they're fine because I get to find out what comes next. Number three, hardcover or paperback? I'm a big fan of anything floppy enough for me to read it. That's usually gonna be a hardback or a digital copy, but if there is a particularly floppy paperback, I am fine with that as well. Finding very, very floppy paperbacks, on the other hand, is a whole other thing. But I would say what's easiest on my hands, because my hands don't work, is an e-reader and then hardbacks along with my uh, book pillow, which is a great help, and then paperbacks that are extra floppy. Number four, my favorite book. Um, don't make me pick just one. And also I just did a video where I talked about my top five favorite fantasy series. So I'm just gonna link to that because who doesn't love a good fantasy recommendation video? Number five, least favorite book. Uh, <laughs> by far the worst book I've ever read is How I Saved a Planet by Stephen Quattro. And I did a whole blog series on it and just about lost my mind on it because it was so bad. So if you want to see my reaction to that, I'll link the blog series down in the description box. Number six, love triangles. Yes or no? I am going to say, yeah, sure, as long as they're consensual. I don't like a whole lot of romance in my books unless it's story first, romance second. Occasionally I do get in the mood for romance books, but I mean, as long as it's consensual, I'm fine with it. Number seven, the most recent book you couldn't finish. Um, I'm going to say that this is just like the latest addition to my DNF pile. And according to Goodreads, that was Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Ng, or is it Nguyen? Because it's NG, and I know that sometimes it's pronounced Nguyen, and sometimes it's pronounced Ng. Anyways, it's not that it's a bad book, it's just that I stopped caring about what was happening in the series because it was more romance first and I just wasn't in a romance mood when I was reading it. I may go pick it up again eventually, maybe, but right now it's definitely not high on my priority list. Number eight, a book you're currently reading. Um, I have a few going right now. I'm reading Vasilisa. I cannot remember the author's name right now. Anyways, I'll pop it up here. 
and it is a middle grade and I'm really not in the mood for middle grade right now because I just finished the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb so now I'm in the mood for adult fantasy because I got really into that. So I've also been listening to the audiobook of the fifth book of The Wheel of Time and I've been really enjoying that right now. So that's a couple of answers for you I suppose. Number nine, the last book you recommended to someone. Uh, I recommend a lot of books to people in my life, but the last book that I recommended that my friend picked up was the first book in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb because I cannot stop spouting how much I friggin love this series so, so very much. So, um, Assassin's Apprentice is the last book I recommended to people. Number 10, the oldest book you've read by publication date. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Beowulf, I guess. <laughs> um, if we're talking about physically the oldest book in my collection, that goes to Tales by Edgar Allan Poe, because I have a copy from like the late 1800s or really early 1900s. That's so weird referencing the 1900s as the 1900s when I was born in 1994. Oh, I, oh, that's so weird. Anyways, it's a really stinking old copy of that book. <laughs> but um, Beowulf is really old too, and I had to read that in high school, so there you go. <laughs> Number 11, the newest book you've read by publication date. Um, okay. This is hard because I've been reading some arcs, but if we're going by like fully published book, I'm gonna say that it's probably going to be Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala because it sounded like a fun read and it sounded kind of similar, like it, it the storyline doesn't actually sound at all similar to Arsenic and Old Lace, but it's Arsenic and Adobo, which made me think of Arsenic and Old Lace, and I just, I need to know what happens. <laughs> Number 12, favorite author. Um, can I have a three-way tie between N.K. Jemisin, Tracy Dion, and Robin Hobb? Because I'm really, really enjoying their books right now, a lot. Number 13, buying books or borrowing books? Um, I'm just gonna say all of the above. Pre-pandemic, I would have said the library was one of my most favorite places to hang out and pick up new books before deciding if I wanted them in my collection or not. And now, in the pandemic, I'm kind of afraid of that. So I've been buying more books recently. But I really like having a more curated collection, so I'm looking forward to being able to check out library books again without being afraid of them. Which, I know that they're quarantined and everything and that they're mostly safe and I'm also almost fully vaccinated. Like, I had my second dose earlier this week, but you have to wait two weeks for it to be fully in your system. So that's going to be a thing for me soon again. But for right now, I am buying books still. Number 14, a book you dislike that everyone seems to love. I am going to go with The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon for this one, and I made a whole video about that, so I'll link that around somewhere. And I think my main issue was I saw the cover and I read the blurb and I was super excited for dragons, but the dragons don't show up until almost the very end of the book, and it's mostly just a love story and some political intrigue and stuff. And I just, that was not what I signed up for when <laughs> I went to go read that. So I wonder now if I reread it with the proper context in mind, if I would like it more. I think that's a book that I'll check up on in like five or 10 years from when I first read it to see if I change my mind about it later. But for right now, I was really disappointed with that book because I went into it for the completely the wrong reasons. Number 15, bookmarks or dog ears? Bookmarks, bookmarks, please. B -b -book -book bookmarks. Actually, I kind of wish I could be a dog ear person, but I don't have that much chaotic evilness in my life. Though sometimes I wish I could express it, but 
Bo bookmarks, please. <laughs> Number 16, a book you can always reread. Well, I think I've already plugged this on my channel I don't know how many times at this point, but The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester, because I get different meanings out of it every time I reread it, and it's just gloriously nonsensical and a complete fantasy world, and I love it so very much. Number 17, can you read while listening to music? Um, with words, absolutely not. Without words, like a nice jazzy background I can get into, but usually if I'm going to read with some sort of sound in the background, I generally throw up a fireplace video or something up on my television and keep the crackling low and ambient in the background. Or sometimes I have my speakers play some thunderstorm sounds because I love reading while it's raining. So not usually music, but background noise, sure. Number 18, one point of view or multiple. Um, I don't really have a preference with this one. As long as it has really good character development and a, a plot that makes sense, like it doesn't have to necessarily be a super rich plot because I'm definitely more of a character driven reader than I am necessarily a plot driven reader, though I do appreciate a really nice good plot. But if there is a plot that just I cannot make it compute in my brain, then I'm not going to have a good time with it. I don't really pay attention though as to whether it's one person or multiple. If there's going to be multiple people, I need a long time to get to know them or else I get really confused, which was another problem I had with Priory of the Orange Tree. Thankfully, there's a section in the back that has all the people and where they're from and it's just a way easier way to keep track of things. But when you're bouncing around with new characters all the time at the very beginning of a book, I have issues. <laughs> But, I don't know, the only thing that I can't handle in a book is when it's written in passive voice. I just can't do it because my history teacher in high school made us write a 12 page history paper in active voice and ever since I cannot handle passive voice to save my life. Number 19, do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? How long's the book? Because if it's middle grade, chances are I'm gonna do it in one sitting. Or like, even if it's just a shorter book, then sure, yeah, I'm fine to do that in one sitting. But if we're talking about like a 900 page chonker over here, then unless I'm doing a 24 hour readathon, no, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I just, no. Especially if I'm really trying to savor the story and read it with the voices in my head saying it at the same time. So like not reading with just to read, but reading to hear it in your brain, which is a thing that I very much do on things that I want to remember more. And this series was definitely one of those things. So I don't know, that's kind of a waffly answer, but that's the answer you're gonna get from me. And number 20, who do I tag? First off, anyone watching this video who feels like they may want to, please do it and then let me know that you did because I would like to see your answers. And to be more specific, because I'm pretty sure these people are watching my video, I'm gonna say Faye from Books and Chocolic, Kayla from Reading Cloud, Eleanor from Eleanor Nickwater, and TB from TB King. So, Good luck, people. I hope you liked my answers to the 20 question book tag. If there are other tags you would like me to do, please do let me know in the comments below. The emoji of the day will be a book and or stack of books or just leave the comment books in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.